those counties that hosted a Donald Trump rally saw hate crimes increase by more than 200 percent. We have a racism in America that is as old as America itself. I'm confident that if at this moment we do not wake up to this threat, then we as a country will die in our sleep. The response to this has to be that each of us make a commitment to see clearly, to speak honestly, and to act decisively in this moment of truth. I, for one, see more clearly than ever an intolerance towards those who do not look like, or pray like, or love like, or speak like the majority in this country. That's part of our story, and we absolutely need to tell it, to face it, to acknowledge it, if we are ever going to change it. Proposing to ban all Muslims, all people of one religion, one faith, from the shores of a country that is comprised of people from the world over, from every walk of life, from every tradition of faith, it's hard to imagine that it's happening in America, but it is happening in America. To tell people of color, born in this country, to go back to where they came from. To describe Klansmen and neo-Nazis and white supremacists and white nationalist terrorists as very fine people. Someone in his maiden speech for the highest office in the land, the greatest position of power and public trust, who describes Mexican immigrants though they commit crimes at a lower rate than those born in this country, as rapists and criminals, constantly warns through incessant repetition of invasions and infestations and calls people human beings, and let's be clear, the most desperate and vulnerable human beings, fleeing the deadliest countries on the face of the planet, showing up here without a dime to their name, without any prospect of hope or advancement, except that they came here to this country of asylum seekers and refugees and immigrants, this country known by the Statue of Liberty. He calls them animals and predators and killers. You do not get kids in cages until you've given people permission to put them in cages by calling them animals and seeking to dehumanize them. We have a Congress too craven to act, a democracy not up to the task that favors those who can pay for access and influence and outcomes, the complicity and the silence of those who are in positions of public trust. And that's exactly what has happened here in this country.